Anyone that's interested in improving and upgrading their current audio setups to effectively their microphone, um, I highly recommend the one I bought because I did a lot of research. Ultimately, I was I was going to go slightly cheaper, but I realized long term I'm only going to upgrade again, and I don't want to keep upgrading. So what I chose is the MV7X by Shure. It's a huge brand. The um, the main one, um, the SM7B is the one a lot of podcasters are using. So it's the big brother of this. That retails at £380, but it also needs a cloud lifter. So you're looking at about £500 just to get that working, plus the audio interface. It's a huge investment for people. This model that I have is £150. There is a model for about £280 as USB support. Because this doesn't have that, they reduce the price heavily discounted on that, which is great because I already have. Um, a user interface so i have a user interface so you can connect it by xlr cable which is the professional way of doing it anyway so when you consider that to go usb you may as well get the one i've got and then buy the user interface for 100 pounds still works out slightly cheaper and a far superior audio experience so this is what i was using before and i've used for many years um samson q2u it's a really good microphone it's nice but I was re- it's 16 bit, this is 24 bit, but the, just the overall sound quality is completely different. You know, this is far superior. Um, both I operated at the same, with the same software. I use Still Series Sonar. Um, and I feel like it gives like a really natural sound. I like it. This isn't overly deep. Um, like I said, it's more, it's more pure for me than this. This one was, I, ha- I was having to boost it too much just to get the sound I wanted. In the end, it was crackling sometimes. There were some vocal breaks and I was noticing that. Um, still far better than not having it, but this is a great upgrade. I'm so happy with it. Um, like I say, you just, you just need, it's going to be an investment to be honest though, to get this, to get this set up, which isn't a lot much compared to the other option though. It's about 250 pounds by the time you've bought the microphone and the, um, audio interface, <laughs> keep forgetting the name, but yeah, it, the audio interface on that. So that, yeah, it's an investment, but it could be an awful lot more. If you was going with the, the top end one, you're looking a lot. Boom arm, you can go they range from like twenty pound up to about hundred pound. Um but yeah, it just depends what you want because I've seen people with these little microphones attached to their phone and it's just not good because it's crackling, it's breaking just because they want a deep tone to their voice. Now most people have a computer or a laptop. I understand a phone's more portable, it's practical, it depends on the environment you're in. I think for the most part, a lot of people sitting at desks, tables, they're in a room. You can just do this. You can, it just becomes a little bit more, I think, professional. Um, there are adapters. I don't know if this would work with that. This one definitely wouldn't actually because you need USB. But some phones have USB. You can get a USB um, converter and then you can attach um, a microphone to it. But yeah, I just showing people my setup really. I, if anyone's interested in what, what I'm using, they can sort of figure, find it for themselves. You know, like I say, it's not overly priced. This is an 80 pound microphone. This is a 150 pound microphone. But for me, this is worth the upgrade. This is one that's going to last me a long time. This was more of my sort of beginner stage, really. I wanted something a bit, a good quality microphone. But I always knew eventually I'd probably end up outgrowing it. And I did because now I'm t- starting to take it serious. And I think that's the thing. If you're going to take video content serious, and it's really important to get the right quality hardware. For me personally, I would rather have better audio than video. You know, I'm having to screen mirror at the moment my phone to the, to the computer. And because of the controls on either side, I'm sort of having to zoom in. So I'm losing video quality. It's not as pure. If I recorded just solely through my phone, like I used to do, you get incredible clarity. But I prefer the audio through this. And for me, I just think it's more important. I can upgrade the camera at a future date. You know, they, they, those things can be taken care of. But for me, poor sound is a no-go. People are just not going to listen if the, if the sound's terrible, you know. And once you've invested, of course, it should last you a long time. There's no reason to suggest that you buy it and you've got to keep upgrading it. Um, but just really showing people the setup, really, because I think a lot of people might get intimidated by the idea of having the audio interface, it might seem a bit daunting and scary. I mean, I've only had it a week and I already figured it out. You know, you, this, this adjusts the gain. So that's the sensitivity of the microphone itself. So if you go too high up, you may pick up unwanted sounds. It may boost too high. So you get that crackling and it might get a bit temperamental. 
you go too low and it might it will struggle to pick your voice up so your your voice would be incredibly low you would like you wouldn't be it'd be so subtle so you can adjust all that and it's great there's even an air button here i haven't tried it with this microphone in fact let's try it now while i'm sitting here so we've got an air button it just adds a bit it usually adds a bit of bloom to the voice um i can't hear it because i've not got it set so i can hear the sound i, I just like to like zone everything out to be honest but that's what that does. That'll give a little bloom to your voice. Um, some people like it, some people don't. I'll have a listen later, figure out if I want to do it. Um, but it's like I say, it, it looks more complicated than it is. It's literally just a cable, a heavy-duty cable pretty much that goes into the microphone. And then at the back, you get a USB that goes to your computer. But within that process, you've got a user interface that's improved the, the, the clarity of your, your product, really, rather than go USB to USB. And like I say, it looks more complicated than it is. And there's always research to be done, you know. You can always do some research. But, yeah, I wouldn't say every microphone is the same because they certainly aren't. I wouldn't say this one, for instance, is not the same quality as that. But this is still better than some other options, you know. So I wouldn't say it's wholly terrible. But you, what you've got to do is fine-tune, you know, just get the right software. Like I said, this Sonar software I'm using from SteelSeries, so easy. You just click, click, click. I did a video, another video on that. So it's not that complicated. Um but yeah, if you want a budget, there are other options. It's just for me, I, I I tend to steer away from low, too low budget because you end up upgrading, upgrading, upgrading. You're always at the low end. You might as well go mid, go in the middle somewhere, and you know it's going to last you a good few years now. Um, obviously, if money's no issue later on, I can I can upgrade to the bigger and better one. But if I think I'm if I feel I'm happy with the with the the tone and the clarity. Then I don't see that there wouldn't really I don't see a need to or justifiable reason to go higher because the way I'm looking at it is let's say that's a five let's say it's five hundred pound microphone and this is one hundred and fifty it don't make sense does it because you can literally have about four of these for the price of that and then you've got like a podcast party haven't you of course you'd need a bigger um inter audio interface but it's just a no-brainer to me. It's like some things, yeah, I'm not, I'm not questioning how good that one is. I bet that's a beautiful one, the SM7B, um, the one most of the podcasters have. But I think for most people, unless you've got a huge podcast party going on, it's just whether you really do need it. Because there's trends and fads, aren't there, that really push people to the brink. Um, but I do think there's a level where we should be taking it to a level of seriousness, though. You know, If it's something you can do on a regular basis, which all of us content creators are, that's why we're creating content. Um, but then I think it's a decision, isn't it, whether you go full 4K or not. You know, I don't know. I just think audio is important. But, yeah, there's there's ways of doing it, isn't there? We're all trying to do trying to do our own little way of creating, really. But, I, yeah, I, I didn't want to gatekeep, really. Find, find what works for me, not tell anybody. And then maybe people might be a little bit curious, like, what's that microphone? How much did that cost? How did you set that up? Um. I don't know if there's a way for me to do that right now, just to show the software. I'll do it quickly, just so people can sort of see what I'm running. Um, put that. I'm just gonna have to move some things around a minute. <laughs> Add source. Let's have a quick look. Display capture, and then we want. On. Right. So I'm no longer in the picture because I want to make it big so people can see. So you get this software. It's still series Solar which is why it says Sonar on the bottom, on the side here. And then we've got all the options for the microphone. Here you have to select the microphone. It's easy to get that wrong. It may change if you put the wrong another device in, so you've got to keep your eye on it before you record, just to make sure. I always do a little test recording first to make sure everything sounds good, and then I go and do my recording. So here you've got some predefined options. I had it on deep voice before I got this microphone. On the other microphone, it was fine. This microphone, I'm like, ah, that sounds nice. You can still do some fine tuning. Um, AI noise cancellation, that's great because it adds a layer of stopping any background noise. Noise gate shuts the microphone off when you're not talking. So when there's a really low period, it just really makes that, that guarantees to not have um, sound coming through. Um, and then compressor really keeps your voice level. So even if you started having these high pitches or the, 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 you get excited and it just keeps a level playing field, which I quite like. Um, and that's literally all it's doing. Very minor adjustments, very automated through this software um and like i say I, i'm really happy with the sound and that's all it's doing is this that's all it's doing um it's plugged in through that open this software up let that run it and then boom it comes through and i'm really really happy with what i have running on this um yeah 